there and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing a major cook with me for Halloween. I'm going to share all my favorite little recipes that I love to make for my kids, whether it be for their lunches or for a Halloween party. I got you covered today. So we're going to be doing about probably 12 different recipes today. I'm going to be throwing together a wonderful cook with me and decorate with me. And then I'm going to take you to Rayleigh's where we're going to be getting my favorite Halloween must have, which is penguin dry ice. That's right guys, we are going to be using penguin dry ice to make our Halloween extra spooky this year. So before you guys get ready to set that table and invite all your friends over, definitely head out to any type of grocery store. You can actually head over to penguin dry ice, their website, and you can actually look up by your zip code where you can find it. It's super easy to find, but we're going to be using it today and I cannot wait to get started with this video. I wanted to say thank you to penguin dry ice for sponsoring today's video and let's get cooking. So the day of any type of party, I like to get everything I need done either the day before or the morning of. So this particular day, I want to get everything set up, ready to go before I start cooking. I already know all the recipes I have and what I need to cook them, so I already have that kind of prepped up in the kitchen, but I want to get the table where I'm going to be prepping and serving everything for our guests totally done and ready to go. So by the time I'm done cooking, everything is hot and I can just throw it on the table. So to get started, I'm going to be using some gorgeous mesh I found on Amazon. I will link it down below. And then this adorable little house, which I love, that I found from Michaels. And then all these other little parts I've either always had or I have either acquired this year. If it's new and I can find a link, I'll put it down below. If not, I will point to the right direction of something similar. So what I like to do a lot of times when I'm doing a nice kind of buffet of any type, I like to layer things high and low and kind of tuck things in, especially since it's Halloween, I want it to be super spooky. So I'm gonna be tucking all kinds of things in and then I'm using a lot of space for my penguin ice. That's a big part of this video today is I love decorating for the holidays, especially Halloween. Things are so spooky and I love to take my decor to the next level. That's kind of my jam. So I like to use the fog to kind of create a really spooky feel and it's going to really bring this whole thing together. So before I get started cooking, I'm just going to put all the finishing touches on this table and then I will drop the ice and it will become the most epic Halloween table ever. But before we get into that, let's get cooking. So to get started, I'd like to do my cupcakes a day or two ahead of the event I'm having, or if you're making these cupcakes for your kid's school or whoever, I would suggest doing these a couple of days in advance before any type of event. One thing I love to do is buy white frosting from the store. I like to put it in my own piping bags. That way, if I wanna do a couple different colors, I'm not making a ton of frosting at home, and it also holds a little better. So I would highly suggest if you are buying, like let's say, I'm using a dark chocolate um, black frosting here. I couldn't get my, my frosting this dark, so I would use the piping bags that you get at like Target or Walmart or wherever, and then put it in your own piping bag. That way you can put your own tips on the end. Just a little hack I like to have. I throw them in the refrigerator and I use them for about a week depending on the different things I have going on. All our kids have different uh, activities at school, so I like to just kind of have them on hand. But anyway, I'm gonna be using a vanilla cupcake with some white frosting and a chocolate cupcake with some black frosting. I'm gonna be making these adorable ghost cupcakes. I love this. This is actually a really, really easy recipe. Just use any type of store-bought uh, cupcake, get them all done, and you're gonna be taking a little bit of fondant. I love this. I just think it's really fun to use. I've used it in many of my videos. I used to be super, super afraid of fondant. I thought it was really hard to use, and now I know the trick to it. It's really about temperature and how you roll it out. Once you kind of get this in a circle, we're gonna cut just a simple round. You can use a cup or really anything. I just picked up whatever was near me, and you're gonna want to make just a simple circle. Then when you have your cupcake, what we're going to do is use probably 
three times as much frosting just in one little area on top of the cupcake, kind of forming a peak. And then we are gonna take the fondant and put it right over the um, cupcake and it's gonna make the perfect little ghost body. Then from there, we're gonna put on two little black eyes and we're gonna set those aside to dry. Cause if you're gonna leave me, then just do it. Don't take it slow, don't be gentle. No, I just gotta know if you're gonna leave me, then just do it. So once you have those little cuties finished and you're gonna let those dry, we're gonna set them aside and we're gonna get started on our really spooky graveyard cupcakes. This is a super easy recipe. So we're gonna take the chocolate cupcakes that we've already made and covered in black frosting. We're gonna ground up just a little bit of Oreos. I just take the filling out of the middle and ground it up. I've done this for lots of other recipes. And what I like to do is really get this nice and coated with the Oreos. This is gonna create kind of a dirt effect, which I really love. I, I Seriously, you can throw like a little tractor on top, make it a little tractor birthday party. I just love how Oreos can really transform a cupcake, but we're gonna just dump all of those in there, and then I'm gonna be using these really cute little tombstones I found at Target, and I'm gonna be writing RIP on them, and I'm gonna be adding some really cute touches to this. Nice and spooky to go with our ghost cupcake. Just do it. I wish I had a little more time with you, baby. Time to figure out what this could be. I just love how these turned out. They're so cute and just really create a really spooky vibe. And I love those little um, bloody bones. I just think they're so cute. So now that we're done with those, I have a couple little cupcakes left over. So what I'm gonna do is just put a little bit of white frosting on them and add a little bit of kind of, I have this like really um, great red frosting I picked up at Target. And I found these really cute kind of, um, knives that I want to add in here and I thought it'd just be kind of fun to have like murderous cupcakes. So we're going to put a little uh, knife in here. I'm going to add a little bit of bloody frosting on here and just kind of call it a day. If you're looking for something super simple, this took me about three minutes to make. So I highly suggest this if you're looking for something really easy. Just never let it end. So now that we're done with these, I'm gonna let them dry and set them aside and get started on our graveyard brownies. This is actually an insanely easy recipe. Just make any type of brownie. I did this in a 13 by nine pan and I'm gonna be using my tombstone cookie cutter and I'm gonna be cutting out as many tombstones as I can. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to be melting down a bunch of black uh, chocolate melts in the pan behind me and I'm going to be adding them to each of these. You could honestly just leave these the way they are and take a little bit of white frosting and write RIP on them but when I finish this recipe and you definitely have to wait till the end of this video because this whole thing will come together in one whole vision but um, I wanted to be able to have them stand up on their own. If they were just a brownie they'd get a little bit weak so I'm going to be using this um, these chocolate melts to actually fortify the brownie to make them nice and strong so I can stick them up into a spooky graveyard. Once you have them all brushed out and they've had a little bit of time to dry, go ahead and take your black uh, frosting and write RIP or any kind of fun message you would like on top. Up, 
So our next recipe is beyond simple. We're just gonna be adding a little bit of that leftover chocolate milk to some Oreos. I'm gonna be stuffing in some cute little bat wings and some eyeballs and just make these little vampire uh, Oreos. I love this, it's so simple, but the way it all comes together on a tablescape just looks so delicious. So our next recipe has to be one of my favorite. If you guys have been following my channel for Halloween, you know I'm on a whole Hocus Pocus kick. So I wanted to attempt the Hocus Pocus spell book and I absolutely love how this turned out. I don't know if it's just the way this brownie just kind of melted, but it does totally look like human skin. So anyway, we are going to be adding a little eyeball. I'm using the black frosting to kind of create the look of um, Winifred Sanderson's uh, spell book and I added in some really fun details the snakes on the side and then some fun stitching to kind of look like it's bound by human skin or whatever they say in the movie so I just kind of took the tip of this and I actually instead of going through the frosting I kind of created going over the frosting which I think really created more depth to this brownie but tell me in the comments down below what you guys think I just love how this turned out. You could probably do little mini versions of these. It's so easy to make, but I just think they're so cute. So the next recipe is our mini pepper poppers. I'm using a mix of jalapenos and just some little mini bell peppers to do these. Obviously our kids aren't gonna wanna eat jalapenos, but I'm gonna show you kind of how to do them. They're really simple. I'm sure you guys have seen them all over the place, but I'm gonna be doing the jalapenos. Use gloves with these because when you hollow out the seeds, it really is all the spicy stuff that gets in your eyes is just yucky so you definitely be using um, gloves you're gonna also need gloves later in this video uh, because we're gonna be using some dry ice but I'm gonna be using a little bit of cream cheese mixed with some mild cheddar you could use any I know Colby Jack is another really great one but I prefer cheddar with my jalapeno poppers and I'm gonna be using a little bit of pepper I'm gonna mix all of that up and then evenly um, put the mix inside each pepper. I love this. It is so easy to make and it's so delicious. Once we're done with that, I'm gonna be taking some crescent rolls and just making some little strips to create our mummies. I know we did you wrong, wish I could take your pain away Cause I hate seeing tears streaming down your face I know you're strong, won't feel this way for long, no So when you're adding your crescent roll strips, it's really great to leave a little opening around the eyes. I will show you a trick on how to tuck the eyes in there later, but it's so easy if you just kind of leave that opening there. And then if it breaks, don't worry about it. Just kind of connect it underneath because that's going to be the really crunchy part that's so good. So go ahead and wrap all of these to create cute little mummies, and then we're going to bake them. Prior to baking them, we are going to put a little bit of egg wash, which is I use two eggs with a about a half a cup of water. I mix it all up and then I'm gonna paint that on the peppers and bake them for about five to 10 minutes depending on how long it takes until things are nice and golden and cooked. So once they're done, I'm just gonna go back to my little eyeball kit and I'm gonna tuck in the eyeballs. What I like to use is a little toothpick to kind of pull back the crescent roll and tuck the eyes in. That's what gives it a really authentic look. I've noticed if you push the eyes all the way to the open part, they just kind of look strange. So you wanna kind of tuck the eyeball underneath to give it that really cute look. Okay. 
So our next recipe is so simple. It's a jack-o'-lantern stuffed pepper. This is really the simplest recipe I think we have today, but you're basically gonna take, you know those kits you get for your kids to cut their pumpkins? Yeah, super simple. We're gonna grab those and we're just gonna cut our peppers like they're pumpkins. This could not be easier. While this is happening, I've got some ground beef, some rice and black beans on the stove, and I'm gonna be mixing that all up and throwing it inside of these. I really like that mixture. It goes well with this, and it also is kind of, when you pack it down inside, it keeps it from falling out. So what I'm gonna do is cut the top off of this, scrape out all of the seeds and kind of the white part that's inside and then we're going to be filling these up but before we do that we're definitely cutting in some really cute spooky faces So a couple tips I have here is make sure before you get started with a bell pepper that it is a bell pepper that can sit upright on its own. It's not one that's gonna topple all over. And then when you go to cut the face in, try to find a flat side. I found a couple bell pepper. I was actually very lucky this particular day. Um, we have six people in our family, so I had six bell peppers and I was able to find a bunch that were nice and big that could sit up on their own and also be large enough to have a nice face. Now, if they're super um, kind of a little wonky on the sides you're gonna have a hard time cutting a face into them nicely so just bear that in mind when you're looking for bell peppers but I'm gonna go ahead and do green ones orange ones and red ones once I'm done I'm gonna add their little hats back in and I am going to start packing them full of their yummy yummy filling Another tip here that you could use is if you can cut these ahead of time, go ahead and chop them up into little bits and throw them into your ground beef and rice mixture. I'm using a Spanish rice and I'm also using taco seasoning in the meat, so it has a very taco salad vibe to it and taste. But if you wanted to, you could actually reuse all of the stuff that you're cutting out of the bell peppers within this. I gave mine to my chickens. As you guys know, we have uh, chickens and I just wanted to kind of spoil them this day. So I gave them my um, little trimmings, but you could do either or, but I just think these turned out so cute. Don't forget to pack them down when you're putting them in there. That's what's gonna keep this from falling out the mouth. So our next recipe is also super easy. We're gonna take some of that leftover rice and bean and uh, meat mixture and we're gonna be making some monster tacos. I like to use the kind of stand-up tacos. This makes it really fun and easy and I like to use things that are malleable so that I can kind of make them do what I want. But since I want the top of this to be super dark, I'm gonna be starting my taco with the light colored cheese. I'm gonna be adding in the lettuce. Then I'm gonna be adding in our meat and bean mixture then I'm gonna set them aside to put our spooky eyes on in a little bit for our next dish I'm gonna be making a spooky cheese plate I am so excited because this is the easiest thing you can do so if you're doing a Halloween party and don't want to do all the extra kid stuff this is a simple go-to to kind of wow any guests coming over to the house to get started, I'm gonna be making a witch's broomstick. So I'm gonna take some, you can really take any cheese. I'm using just a simple string cheese and I'm gonna be cutting it into thirds. I'm gonna flip the block over and cut it into thirds again. So it kind of makes the broom part. Then I'm gonna take a little chive. I'm gonna wrap it around the top just to kind of create that effect of a broomstick. Then I'm gonna cut a little hole in the top of the cheese and stuff a pretzel in it. This couldn't be easier and couldn't be more delicious. So the next one might be one of my favorites. You're basically gonna take just a basic brie roll. We're gonna be using our tombstone cookie cutter and I'm gonna cut two tombstones out of two different brie uh, wheels. Now, I will say when you go to cut these off, we wanna keep these edges. We're gonna be using them to stick in all kinds of spooky silliness. So don't throw those away. We're gonna be using them again. So I like to use that. Obviously, you're gonna see that the cookie cutter is not gonna go through the cheese by itself. So you're gonna wanna use a knife to kind of sharpen up your edges. 
Once you have that done, you can pretty much write anything you want on here. I'm gonna write RIP on one, and on the other, I'm gonna be adding some spooky knives and more blood just to make it kind of like a murderous tomb. I wanna do it all with you by my side. If you're in, meet me here tonight. Be brave and come along, I'll be your right. Promise we don't need no brake lights. We can travel the world, so just say yes. Choose to do whatever comes next. So for the next thing, I'm just gonna take these little mozzarella pearls. I'm gonna be adding a little bit of olive oil and some crushed red pepper. I usually will do this anyway, just because I think it's super delicious. But I'm gonna mix those all up and then I'm gonna be adding just some fun little Halloween toothpicks and I'm gonna push those into those pieces of brie that we cut off earlier and just kind of stage them around the cheese plate. Catch a glimpse of Panama We don't need a map I'll let you know when we've arrived Yeah, we can travel the world So just say yes Choose to do whatever comes next So now that I have everything on the cheese plate I'm going to add a little bit more blood Just to kind of create a spooky effect And we're all done the next recipe we're going to do is a pumpkin shooter. This is super easy and I wish I had had time to do this with my Cricut. I should have used some um, vinyl to just kind of create this pumpkin face, but I didn't have time so you're going to have to bear with me. But I'm just going to use these little glasses. I'm going to use a Sharpie that I know will come off in my dishwasher and just create some spooky little faces on here. And I'm going to be filling them with my pumpkin soup recipe. I will link it down below. I shared it with you guys last year in my uh, Harvest Cook With Me and it's a very simple, amazing uh, recipe. I also add a little chipotle to it so it's kind of spicy. But I'm just going to be adding some pumpkin faces on here and we're going to get those on the table. So now that all of our recipes are done, I'm gonna show you how everything turned out. I just think these ghost little cupcakes are so cute. I absolutely love them. I'm gonna be using them in the house. I love these little rest in peace ghosts that I'm gonna be adding to a really cute uh, graveyard. I love these murderous cupcakes. They are so delicious. And these bats are so cute. And then this literally is still sitting in my house. My kids refuse to eat it because they love it so much. Um, I thought it turned out super cute. The cheese plate was gone first, so good. Each little bite was devoured by all of our friends and our neighbors. And so to get started, I'm gonna just be adding each of these into all the little parts of this tablescape. I love this house. Again, I picked it up at Michael's. I just think it's super cute. I'm gonna use it for other things, but I think it just turned out really fun. Then I'm gonna take our graveyard cupcakes. I wanna add them to this cute little tray I picked up from Michael's as well, and just kind of create what could look like a nice spooky graveyard. And then from there, I'm gonna start filling in the rest of this table with all of our bites. Tell me in the comments down below, what do you guys think about everything? How do you think this tablescape turned out? And are you excited to see our penguin ice make this table come to life? So now that it's time to eat, I'm just going to use a little dollop of daisy and I'm going to add some cute little bloodshot eyes to these adorable tacos and then I'm going to use a little bit of hot sauce down the middle just to kind of give it a bloody effect but also something that's not super spicy. I think these turned out super fun. I should do this for the kids in their lunch. When tears turn down my face, my mama I wanted to add something where the soup sits up high. I didn't, I was gonna put it in the tiered tray, but it ended up looking cuter here. So I'm just gonna use these little cauldrons I picked up from the dollar spot. I'm gonna put our little soups inside. And then I'm also gonna use some larger cauldrons uh, that I picked up from Michael's that are for actually making soup. And I'm just gonna add our little bell pepper jack-o'-lanterns. I just think these look so happy. Every time I look at them, they just put a big smile on my face. Taking my hand. All of those late nights 
For the tombstone graveyard, I'm gonna be adding a plate. I'm gonna be pouring a bunch of Oreos inside to give it, again, that dirt effect. And then I'm actually gonna be using some toothpicks to put behind the tombstones, rather, to create kind of a standing up effect. I didn't know how to get them to stand up without using more of our cream, but I thought it'd be easier to do it this way, and it actually turns out perfect. So now that we have everything in place, I want to do a quick once over so you guys could see it before I get out our penguin eyes to really bring this to life. But I just think this turned out so cute. You really can not go wrong with any one of these recipes. They're very easy, nothing too challenging, just simple stuff you can make at home. Even if you were just gonna make these and throw them in the kids' lunches or just have them during the Halloween uh, season, they're just kind of fun and silly. So again, tell me in the comments down below. I'd love to know what was your favorite recipe we made today and let's just speed this up and get to the penguin ice. Now that I have the table set, I am going to start to chopping up my penguin dry ice. It's very easy. I keep mine in the sink and I just use a knife to kind of chop off little blocks depending on what size I need. And then I'm going to just drop it into the little cauldrons and some spooky little, this jack lantern's awesome. I just add a little bowl in there that kind of houses the dry ice. And then I add a little warm water to these. One of the things I love about penguin dry ice is how it can transform any type of decor, even if it's not Halloween, but it's just something kind of fun and spooky. Um, I just love the way you can really go any limit you want, whether it be just a little spooky or totally over the top, which is what I love. Penguin dry ice is the way to go. Um, again, like I said in the beginning of this video, you can check out their website. I'll put a link down in the descriptions below so you can check out where, um, which stores around you have it. And you can also check out their website for a ton of inspiration on how to use dry ice, how to um, add it into your decor, and just some other really fun inspirational ways that you can play with it. I absolutely love this. Tell me in the comments down below how you guys think this turned out. I'd love to know. And have you used penguin dry ice before? for. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you are new to my channel, my name is Lauren. I do all things home decorating. I love cooking. I love making things extra special for our children. We have four little kids and I just would be so honored if you would subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell because I don't post on a normal schedule. I am more of a creator on here on uh, YouTube, so I, I don't have like a set schedule. I love bringing some fun creative ideas to you and I also love more than anything your comments 
comments down below. I love connecting with you there. And I love most of all getting more inspired by what you guys are doing at home over on my Instagram at Mrs. Lauren Nicholson. So definitely hit the subscribe button and don't forget to tell me if you're new down in the comments down below. If you're returning, thank you so much for supporting my channel and I'll see you guys in so many Thanksgiving and Christmas videos. You won't know what to do with yourself. So I will see you soon. I can't wait. Thank you again and have a spooky Halloween. Bye. I just gotta know if you're gonna leave me then just do